This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Play close attention as we prepare now to go into. Hey Amen. I hope you got your notepads. I'm going to take my time. Uh, we're going to be starting out in Matthew chapter 28, but I got a lot of uh, preliminary stuff to go over first, amen, <laughs> before we actually open up the scripture. So, you had your notepads ready? Amen. You want to begin to write this right here. You have to know what you're talking about to be effective in the kingdom of God. You have to know what you are talking about to be effective in the kingdom of God. And I begin to look up uh, effective. Now, where effective, it, it means to be successful in producing a desire or intended result. Effective means to be successful in producing a desired result. Or intended result. Amen? Amen? So somebody, anybody here want to be effective in your walk with God? Amen. Amen. You want to be successful with your walk with God? Come on, y'all going to have to talk to me today. Amen. Amen. I got this little quote from T.R. Osborne some time ago, but I went back over it and it came back again. It said, until our creed is transformed into a deed... We haven't learned the creed. Amen. Huh? Amen. Will we say that again? Amen. Until our creed is transformed into a deed, we haven't learned the creed. And y'all know I'm a teacher, so deed is what? Deed is an act. Hmm? Huh? When you speak of a deed, we talk about to act or an action that is performed intentionally or consciously. Huh? So now you understand better when I say until our creed is transformed into a deed, we haven't learned the creed. And creed is a system of belief or faith. Huh? A system of belief or what we say we believe in. Now I told y'all belief, true belief, right? For true belief produces actions. Amen. If you got somebody say you're a believer of Jesus Christ, it should be proven by the actions or the lifestyle that follows your confession that you are a believer of Jesus Christ. I told you many times, I tell you time and time again, that God does not judge you off of what you say, but what you do after you say what you say. So you can stand in church all day long and say, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you, but I can hear the scriptures saying, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Or if you love me, you will do what I told you to do. Therefore, Jesus is not just going off of what we're saying, but what we do after we say what we say. Everybody got that? Until our creed, someone said, until our creed or system of belief is transformed into a deed or an act or action, we haven't learned the creed or what we believe in. <laughs> we, we, ain't, we ain't learned nothing. We come in here week in and week out. Amen? Ask yourself, when am I going to walk in this victory? Uh, that's why I'm so like with songs you that we sing. That's why I be doing, you might think, why does he keep? Doing this to me. What I'm trying to sing the song, Pastor. You know, I'm trying to learn how to play, sing the song and play the keyboard at the same time. And then he want to throw his own little stuff in there because we're not just singing a song. Uh, you know, I want y'all to begin to make declarations in the realm of the spirit. Amen. 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 Well, you're going to sing a song, say that, that, that there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. You got to visualize chains being broken while you're singing that song and expect that thing to be happening literally. Amen. I sang a song I love to sing that, that uh, victory is mine. Amen. Victory is mine. Amen. You got to truly believe. What's the use of singing a song if you don't truly believe that victory is yours? 
That's religion. That's not, you understand? That's religion. That's not a relationship. Huh? That's not true belief. We're not here just to sing songs. We're here to make declarations in the realm of the Spirit. We're here to de- declare and to decree in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why a lot of times I be saying, Lord, please help them to catch on to what we're doing. Because if you really caught on to what pastor's trying to teach you, amen, we'd be going crazy up in here. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? Somebody said we walk by faith and not by sight. That's why I'm going to go on a whole other teaching of faith. Because we still don't get it. You got to get faith. What you believe, you, you got to get it out of your head and you got to get it in your heart. See, that's our problem. It's in our, what we believe is just in our head. It's just mental. You understand? It's just in our head. But it ain't going to manifest in your life till you get this thing in your heart. Amen. That's why you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. But you got to believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And then you will be saved. That's why the Bible declares that devils, they believe and they tremble. Amen. So it's not a big deal to just to say you believe if you don't have any action after you say you believe. To show uh, that you believe God because you are doing what he told you to do. Amen. Why wouldn't you do what God told you to do if you really believe you're going to get the results that he said you can have? Amen. Huh? Amen. Ask yourself, do I really believe this gospel? Huh? In the fullness, because I say, I know you believe it, but in the fullness, because until you get this in the fullness of belief in this gospel, you're not going to get Bible results. Huh? Anybody here want Bible results? Or you just want to stay religious? You just want to come to church, get a little shout on, do your little good deed on the Sunday and go back home and be the same person you were before you came? Huh? So let's turn this page over here that I got. Amen. We're still not going to be on Matthew 28 yet. I want you to write this down. We're teaching. We're teaching. Amen. The devil know or he knows what you don't know. Very important if you want to be effective in the kingdom of God. The devil or devils, (laughs) they know what you don't know. Because a lot of times you're saying the devil, you ain't dealing with the actual devil. You're just dealing with a devil. (laughs) Very few at the level where they deal with the devil or Satan himself. So write devil or devils. Because the Bible, you never hear the word demon spoken in the Bible. I haven't seen demons yet, but devils, amen, or unclean spirits. Amen. So would you, the devil or the devils, they know what you don't know. They know what you don't know. And you got to know the authority that has been given to you. Somebody say, you got to know the authority that has been given to you. You have to know, write this down, you have to know your place in the kingdom of God. There's another reason why we're failing. We don't really know our place. We read where our place is. Amen? Amen. But we don't got that thing in our heart. We haven't made it a part of our belief system. He says you have to know your place in the kingdom of God. So if you got to know your place in the kingdom of God, it might make sense to know what the kingdom of God is. So, you know, you got a pastor that wants you to know what the kingdom of God is. (laughs) Kingdom. A lot of times you deal with the word kingdom. (laughs) You deal with like a, a country, a state or territory ruled by a king. Amen. That's a simple definition. It also means uh, the spiritual reign of authority or authority. The spiritual reign or authority. I'm going so well with this. It's going to make sense in a minute. We're going to open up the word. Amen. Amen. Y'all good? So kingdom, a country, state, or territory ruled by a king. And, and take mental note of everything that we're saying now because we open up the scriptures. You're going to see what the Lord is saying. Also, the spiritual reign or authority of God. And then also when you're dealing with kingdom, and this is a lot with, with Jesus, when, he, when he's speaking of the kingdom of God, and for us to learn what the kingdom of God is, he's talking to us a lot of times on this wise. Kingdom isn't always used as a geographical area, but rather to the activity, somebody say activity, activity. of the king himself. 
Like a long time ago, years ago, when I first got, I heard, I heard a man of God say that the kingdom of God, love that definition, is God's way of doing things. That's one good definition. Kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. So it, 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 it isn't always used as just a, you know, a ge geographical area, but rather to the act. Activity of the king himself, his exercise, somebody say his exercise of sovereign power. And most of the time you deal with that word power in the New Testament. How many of the New Testament was translated from what? Greek. So when you're dealing with, you look that up in the Greek, when you're dealing with power, and you'll normally come up with the word authority. And that's what we're focusing on, the authority. Like we say, behold, I've given you power. You can say, behold, I've given you authority. You understand? Somebody say, I have authority. I'm going to prove it to you by scripture. Amen. Amen. Here we go now. I already broke that down. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But power, just write this down for your own definition. <laughs> authority, control, dominion. How many know when Adam sinned in the garden, they lost the dominion? But when Jesus died and resurrected again, what he did, he took back everything that the devil had stolen by his deception of man. So now you go walk, you, we walk in dominion, whether you know it or not. We're supposed to. Hmm? Amen. We're supposed to. Someone said we're supposed to. <laughs> Amen. So when you deal with power, you're dealing pretty much with authority. That's what you're dealing with, the authority of the power. Amen? The control. You have control. You have dominion. Somebody say, I have dominion in Jesus' name. That's the key thing. Is it all this is in Jesus' name. Say, in Jesus' name. Can I get a little poll here? Amen. How many of y'all been using the name of Jesus since we've been in this little series? Amen. She's been using that. She ain't even been here. She been using, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. How many, amen. How many have been using the name of Jesus? Amen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something for real. After you use it after the day, you're going to see some results. If you receive this message, amen, you're going to see some results because you're going to find out what your place is. I told you one time, but I think we went, we moved a little bit too fast. Uh, what our place. So you got, it's important that you know your place in the kingdom of God. It's important that you understand not only your place, but yes, that authority that you have in the kingdom and your responsibility and what's been delegated to you. And we're going to find all that out right now. So now we could go here to Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to begin reading here at verse number 18. It says, and Jesus, come on, I'm saying Jesus. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, listen, close it now. He says here, all, somebody say all. all. Somebody say all. All, all power or what? What did we just learn? All good. That's good, class. Amen. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now that's Jesus, right? But look, now look how this thing goes together right here. Let me read one more time because it still went over y'all head. Amen. It said, and Jesus came and spake unto them, spake unto them, meaning who? The disciples, right? Amen. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? So what I told y'all, I told y'all, every time you read the word of God, read it, take it personally. This is written to you as well, to the glory of God. And, 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 he, and, and he came and spake unto me. Amen. That's how you got to read your Bible from this day forward. I told you, y'all get received this today. Y'all going gonna, gonna to get this thing. <laughs> see, see, we read the Bible as a story, some of us, amen, or, or they life. No, this is your life or their results. No, this is supposed to be your results. But you got to know where your place is. You got to know that he was writing this thing to you. Then they say, well, Jesus was a prophet. Yes, this is a prophetic scripture right here. Huh? So let's read it one more time now. And Jesus came and spake unto us. Amen. Amen. Saying, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And because of this, you got to know how to read the Bible. And because of this has taken place, he said, now you go ye, therefore. Y'all still don't get it. I told y'all, you ever get what I be preaching, man? Y'all be, be going crazy. Y'all ain't getting it. You ain't getting it. You ain't getting it. When we read it one more time. Amen. Let me read it one more time. 
Now listen, all power has been given unto me, which is Jesus, right? Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is Erico 904-713-3609. Again, it's Erico 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.